And now, live from the Night Views Radio Studio, it's the Rob Saul Show. Please welcome South Jersey's favorite single dad and radio's most bitter divorcee, Rob Saul. Oh, well, there we are. Welcome to the Rob Saul Show. We are alive. And yeah. uh, what, a, what a program we have today. Our, uh, Sean, what's going on? Because I had to reboot. Uh, the, the show was airing. Everybody was frozen. Uh, it looks like uh, Bobby, Fran, and Zen are still um, frozen on the side of the screen. What, what, what is going on? Yeah, they need to refresh. Yes. Can can you tell them to refresh? I know I don't have Bobby Fran's number. I've sent so to just send them something to refresh their stream. Oh, there we go. There, Bobby there Fran we is go. Jeez. <laughs> hey. Zen. We just need Zen. Well, right now we could have him praying. He's praying that we have a better stream than what we started with tonight. But uh I think he's talking with us. Yeah. Welcome to the uh, Rob Saul show. Uh, we are here. Doug Nelson. Uh, I know he had to, a storm or something. I told him not to worry about it because we uh, now we have a uh, quite a crew with us tonight. And I, of course, I want to welcome to uh, the show. He's a, a new member. He's going to be a full time member of the uh, Rob Saul show. And uh, he'll be working the board and, and sound effects and, and with us on all these shows and interviews. Uh, please welcome Bobby Fran. Bobby, thanks for uh, being here. And uh, thank you for being This could be gratuitous. I'll give myself a applause. How about that? There thanks, go. everybody. I'm really, I'm really excited to be here. Be with Zen. Yeah, exactly. and, uh, yeah. yeah we're going the wrong way people. with recruiting people. We're supposed to be get better people. Ah, why, are we yeah. recruiting, why are we recruiting from worse podcasts? Uh, well, I found I'm somebody on a But I wore a cup. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, I said, well, the ghetto, the ghetto basement, uh, the only thing professional about it seemed to be uh, what Bobby Fran was doing. And I said, you know what? Maybe I should recruit the guy. Now, how did the, uh, the ghetto basement? I know Owen is, uh, uh, has been dying. He, uh, he actually told people that I recruited him uh, to, to be a full-time member of the show, which I didn't. What happened is he was a guest on the show uh, one time, uh, and Zen really liked him and said, oh, I, I like, like this Bobby. guy. Not Bobby. Here. Yeah. Uh, Owen we're talking about. Um, no, well, I yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I like Bobby Fran. Yeah, but no, Bobby, you said you I like joking. It. I'm glad you're here. Don't you can't interrupt me, Rob. You see what happens is when we talk, there's a delay, and uh, if you talk, then we uh, hear the other person. Bobby. I'm talking about the guy. I'm the host. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the show, Bobby. Yeah, thank no, you, but, Zan. Uh, Appreciate you, bro. Uh, but. Uh, Zen liked Owen, and what I said to Owen, I said, yeah, Zen really liked you. He takes a lot of time off because he works. He has shows to do. I said, you know, I I'll have you fill in for Zen when he's out. But then he started getting a little, I don't know. I don't know. Listen, I like Owen, but uh, this is uh, the what way it is. What did you get is. a little like? What do I don't understand. Can you elaborate? I did on the Patreons, but I'm not going to make the show about that again because – then he wants to come on and explain himself. And I have to make my whole program about the ghetto basement drama. And I'm not doing that. So okay. yeah, yeah, he stand know. up for himself. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Did everybody get that one? All right. There we go. Guys, I don't understand. Uh, yeah. People, you can either watch a podcast where everybody's fighting like a bunch of homos or you watch the rob saul show where all we, we we take care of our own business 
It's just us taking care of our own business. Nobody, we don't even know anybody else on different podcasts. Who? Oh, man. Brad Pumak? Uh, Eno Pukantu? Uh, yeah. Miss <laughs> Never Bear? heard of him. What? Yeah. Yeah. We live in our own soul yeah. show bubble. It's, uh, Sounds like it's, a bunch yeah. of hanger ons. Hanger I got on, a good, uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> I got a good uh, slogan for the show, like a, like a, like a, you know, like a thing where it's like Rob Saul show, pass the Saul. Yeah, hey, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. Judges, <laughs> yeah. okay, judges like it. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that's why you hired him. He's got a thingy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah and I have a sound effect board too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he made a uh, he made a Rob Soul Show bumper, and I was listening to it, and it was like some poor music. And I said, if I ever uh, when I wh whenever I make love to a woman again, I think I'm going to play this. Just to, no, so show him the new Rob Soul Show bumper. He's got high hopes. <laughs> yeah. oh. This is the Rob Soul Show. Yeah, and I'll take off my robe. yeah, baby. You know what's up. Who else you gonna make it with the goddamn own show, girl? There you go. I like it. Hey, I'll that's, take it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. That, that's real but, sexy. Uh, that music. Yeah, it is. things are looking up. <laughs> the music is right. On just my name's in it. You know, it's. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I do, but uh, hey, later on in the program, we have a uh, guitarist from Chicago, Keith Hallens, with us. Uh, yeah. yeah, fucking fantastic. Look forward to talking to him. So. For those of you um, with us that uh, were promoted on the sites, uh, Chicago or Keith Allen fan sites, uh, he will be here shortly. So I know you're annoyed. Like, what, what the fuck am I watching? We came to see Keith Allen. He'll be here at around 9 o'clock in about 20 minutes. So there's that. That's Longest Eastern to... Standard Chicago time. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, <laughs> that, Bobby. Friend, you're fired. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute, let me double up. <laughs> so, uh, Zen's uh, podcast, "Men Are Talking," is out, uh, and it's with a vengeance. Yeah. And, uh, people are are loving the podcast. Let's talk a little bit about it, uh, Zen. Okay. Uh, Men are talking. The, the new uh, Anthony. You know, uh, Richard Dish well, it would, it would, I wouldn't have been anything without the Rob Saul show. I just want to say that you know. If, <laughs> I know. If I, know. I know. What the, you were billed some somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw I you were billed. Somebody, I, it might have even been. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. The uh, I saw build. you build. I'm build. I saw you build on like a show. It might have been the ghetto base. It was like uh, Anthony Zenhauser of the Rob Saul show. And I laughed. I'm like, that's probably got to fucking annoy the shit out of him. Is, uh, Zen, I had to like, he like begrudgingly came to the show. I just added him to the credits without his permission. And uh, he shows up when he can. And no, somebody you're cool. <laughs> it's cool. It's a per diem gig. You know, Bobby, yeah. don't feel like <laughs> you have to come into the show. Okay. Like yeah. if, you're having a, if you're having a yeah. hard day. And you can't come do the right. Rob Saul show. Then yeah. you could take it's cool. Sometimes nobody shows up. Yeah. yeah. So that's, but yeah. He said he's full time. He said BF is full time. I was like, that comes with benefits such as yeah. BF. You can now officially get a twenty percent discount at Silk City Hot Sauce if you enter code replay. Uh, uh, listen, don't so come on my oh. fucking, uh, <laughs> with your fucking thing. Uh, Is that what's that uh, code? What's that code again? Replay. Code Silk okay. City Hot code Sauce. Uh, well, that's where we are live here from the Silk City Hot Sauce Studios. Uh, this guy is fucking plugging the hell out of a hot sauce. <laughs> me and Bob have uh, steak and put this code in. Trying to make yes. money off of me and Bob's hot and a, sauce. And a code I don't get anything, actually. Work. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, the code works, but I don't get anything <laughs> for it. So don't get anything, uh, I get nothing. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so, uh, Robbie Mary Mix is out to love it and enjoy it. And it's a uh, vegan, uh, but it's just vegan Worcestershire sauce. But I I know people that marinate steaks with it, and it's delicious. So, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want with the uh, Bloody Mary mix. Uh, Bloody Marys are essentially uh, uh, good with that. But uh, Kevin Brand's got a hot sauce. The, uh, the Honeymooners uh, podcast uh, has, a, has a hot sauce. Uh, Bob Levy's. Uh, ass looking blue cheese hot sauce. So go to silkcityhotsauce.com, use promo code ROB for the Rob Saul Show uh, discount, and uh, you have a uh, you'll get a fantastic deal on uh, many great hot sauces here at the Silk City Hot Sauce Studio. Ooh. 
rules. So uh, why haven't I been on Men Are Talking yet? Because I'm not a man. Because you're yeah. waiting for your buddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Dio I, said I that really your uh, Dio said that the uh, Bloody Mary mix is good for unclogging drains. Wow. Okay. He and said he, he said he uses it to unclog. That, but... yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said it unclogs drains. I forgot. So, hey, hello yeah. to our chat, uh, Chris. Uh, make sure you uh, keep us, uh, you know, uh, you know, keep us informed. In the loop. You know why, or... Do you know why Rob picked Bloody Mary mix as his what? hot sauce to promote? Because they're just like Bloody Marys. Rob is also involved in regret after a night of drinking. Ooh, wow. that yeah. is true. That is true. So it is the perfect product. So yeah. I'm sure that BF's got a button for it. Yes. <laughs> um, man, but uh, listen, I, I was a, a, a AM bartender for years and I perfected my Bloody Mary. So when I went to work with Silk City Hot Sauce, I said, how about we do a Bloody Mary mix? And I thought that was a uh, fantastic idea. And people love it. I'm telling you, people love it. We had a Bloody Mary party. I used to bring it to work in the mornings, and I'd make people that uh, you know Bloody Marys with the the mix, and and they loved it. The Mary mix is uh, uh, absolutely delicious. Have you tried it? Do you like uh, Bloody Marys, uh, Bobby Fran? No, I'm not a big fan of Bloody Marys, but my sister who watches the show, here. she uh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> she uh she ordered like the whole set and uh got the hot sauce and everything I, she liked your bloody mary mix yeah she's a bloody oh. mary fan so yes there you go i like that you were we'll now do, uh we'll get, we'll get her to do a testimonial for you <laughs> yeah you were an am bartender am yes i assume am mornings. stands for ass to mouth uh, yeah well for that uh, <laughs> I forgot the team writing these and for, but in that city especially yeah. yes Yes. Um, so how did the guys take it over at uh, TGB when you said that uh, you were coming over and going to be a part of the uh, Rob Saul show? Well, they were, I mean, of course, most of, I think mostly they were happy for me, but they were kind of surprised and shocked and stunned. And I tried to reassure them that I won't be going anywhere. I'm going to add this to it. But, um, you know, Owen kind of was a little surprised. I think he was expecting maybe you should have, like, uh, called him up maybe a la uh, uh, like Jay Leno, the, uh, Howard Stern. And then said, hey, uh, Bob, I'm going to, uh, maybe Bobby Friend's going to come be on the uh, Rob Saw show. And I, I don't want you to be upset about oh, it or something shit. like that. I don't, know. I don't know. I think he expected something like that. I don't know. So, yeah, that's my so, But overall, <laughs> most of them, they're all, they're all happy for me. And I know he's happy for me. But, uh, yeah, yeah, shout out TGB. Oh, uh, well, but I mean, yeah. uh, obviously, this is your number one priority now. No, I'm kidding. But it's, uh, <laughs> uh, this, this is uh, Owen's yeah. in the chat right now, and he said, uh, uh, "Fuck you, Rob." Well, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, he is not in the chat. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So yeah, he's, he's on his own show. show. Well, yeah, I think yeah. Owen did want to be a part of the show, but I mean, listen, this yes. is this is. Uh, this is something that wasn't just my decision. Right now, my my right hand man, who's always with me, because he's on Thank you. Levy Land, and he's the main guy with me oh. on, on in my in my uh, career here, is Chris Abels. So I ran it by Chris Abels, and Chris Abels uh, agreed with it, and uh, that's that's how it happened. Now, if yeah, I uh, Robin means honestly, Chris, if I yeah. would have said, "Hey, I want to bring Owen on full time," what would have you have said? I would have said he's busy with his relationship right now, so I don't think that that's probably a good idea. So, yeah. Oh, you bitch, Chris. <laughs> I mean, I, I know, Chris, I mean, Chris that's what I would have said. Now, look, uh, yeah. Well, we yeah, he is Chris. doing that. Uh, what's that. He's doing that BJ show. Uh, what is it? Uh, and uh, you know, he's got the BJ video. show. <laughs> the OJ. The BJ show. <laughs> <laughs> wrong, wrong first letter there, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. No, so, BJ's no, on this, the only. This pens. is the B. This is the BJ yeah, show. You didn't have to tell yeah. everybody how I got here, Zen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's That's your name, that. Bobby Fran Jones, or Bobby? <laughs> whatever the fuck it is. Uh, yeah. uh, so Bobby well, Felicio. So you're doing the <laughs> you're doing the uh, the ghetto basement, and uh, obviously, I mean, I Chris uh, 
got me into this show. And, and then, you know, Becky and people send me clips that are like fascinating that I talk about, but I mean, I thought uh, you would be a great addition. Was there any thought where you like, Hey, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should just, you know, uh, focus my time and energy on, on the stuff I'm doing now. Or, or were you just like, fuck it. Yeah. I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do Saul show. Well, I guess, and you know, initially my whole thing is I'm always into the next thing. So I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. Like we all discussed amongst ourselves. Any of us guys would have jumped at the chance to do one of these shows, whether it be your show or Levy land. So then none of, no one could either fault anybody for trying this, but uh, yeah, I, 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 said, I didn't uh, hesitate. I, when I sent the email, I sent I, I do the emails with Sean, our producer, uh, about all the shows. And I was like, oh, this is a guest bus. And I said, plus, Bobby Fran is uh, joining the show. Send him a code. And he goes, which show? And I laughed to myself like, yeah, he wishes Levy Land. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, no, I, I, no, I appreciate the. I appreciate the recognition and all the stuff you said about, you know, when you guys have been on the show multiple times and uh, you've pointed out, hey, BF, you're very professional and keep at what you're doing. And also, um, yeah, I'm just about, you know, just grinding and putting my stuff out there and just uh, and just having a lot of fun and just uh, seeing where it takes me. Yeah. And we're going to bring Bobby Fran on the um, on the Patreon Saul shows as well, because I want to do more of those yeah. and I'm going to make it. I'm going to make him a moderator. That way he can throw up uh, video clips and uh, pictures as we're talking about it. Cause I know you know how to do the stream yard and things like that. Yeah. So it'll give our, you know, I'm busy doing other stuff, uh, you know, hosting with uh, Chris Abel, not yeah. that Bobby Fran, it's not going to host, but he's, he's good with this uh, uh, stream yard stuff and can, and, and make it more visually appealing. But uh, Becky Zen does just, DM, Becky just DM'd me. Why, she said, I'm, I'm, I'm sounding mean. Am I being mean? Yeah. Oh, no. No. You seem like you're a little to bitchy mean. today. Yeah. yeah, being mean. Even when he you're just the, being Zen. Even when he got in the chat today, he's like, Bobby, oh, I, was only, I was only trying, to, I was only trying to, to, to initiate Bobby into the podcast, but it's okay. Let's, right. let's just yeah. pretend no, he's not I'm here. No, you were being mean before we got on there. You're like, what are we doing today? What, what yeah. is that? Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, uh, I wasn't owning that shit. He was already like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bobby, I just got a uh, text from Zen that said, uh, would you like to start uh, co-hosting Men Are Talking? Uh, so <laughs> you're, you're moving up, Look out, Kish. You are moving up. Move over, yes, Kish. You're moving. Move over, <laughs> Kish. You're just, you you yes. just went down another three rungs. Sideways? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I was going to say, is men are nah. talking already, um, already a, a rung no. above Saul show? No, no. no, dude, that show is just, you know what? Yes, it is. I'm doing it, it for, I'm doing it for fun. Stop I'm, being modest. Dude. I don't want to be a, a part show. of this bullshit universe where I'm watching know, everybody fight each other on these different. I mean, everybody's fighting now. Yeah. This the the boots guys are fighting with this guy, and these people are Uncle this and that, and my mother and and. Uh, Carl and you know Gino yeah. and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. You can't well, keep up with I'm who's fighting. With all that, by the way, yeah, I just Bobby. can't do it anymore. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it's again, I mean, what, the 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 Absolutely. brilliant thing about men are talking is just a brilliant concept. It's which go is on. Well, yeah, it's, which is why I wanted to bring Jake Pentland, uh, Roseanne Barr's son, because uh, he's a friend of mine, and it, it sounds like right up his alley, and uh, he's going to come do the show eventually. But the concept is. The best part of men are talking. Tell them the concept again when you came up with uh, men are talking. That way people know so, why it is so brilliant. Actually, you know what's funny is that I had um, I had an idea for a podcast about a show for women, just a show mm -hmm. for women. And mm -hmm. uh, it's funny. I was I was talking about it with with Becky, and she said, "Why don't you make a show uh, how to make women better?" <laughs> so it's actually a woman's idea. Yeah. And I was like, that's a great idea. Let's, I should do that. <laughs> so I decided to make the show about a, a show for women done all by men. There's no women allowed uh, on the show. It's all men hosting and guests. And we show women how to live better lives by listening to men for a change. And that's, <laughs> and that's the show. And it's mostly about, about, women this modern world of thinking they have to compete with men that they have to like go and and live lives uh in careers that they don't 
make them happy, but because feminism tells them that's the way to live, the modern the modern woman has to be a certain way. They can reassure themselves that they're living the best life they can. But a lot of women are happy just, you know, finding a man, being at home. Uh, and, I'll, and I'm not saying women oh. can't uh, work. I'm not saying women can't. I mean, but be happy about it, you know, enjoy your life, you know. If yeah. a lot of women are working and they're not happy and a lot of women work to the point where they can't have kids, you know, women forget that their, their eggs are on a timer and men can go Damn. all the time. Megan, Megan, we can work. Stewart's having but kids in his seventies. Who is? <laughs> Rod Stewart. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I think his wife is fucking some younger guy and not telling him, but that's. Why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's down at the and McJagger, like have like a three-year-old too, but uh, I saw your show yeah. with Shuli Fridays and that was, that was a lot of fun. Oh, thanks mm -hmm. man. You know, I'm going to have you on. I'll have, I'm having Chris on next Ooh. week. Oh, I'm having Chris uh, on this week. So yeah, Chris wow. will be on this week. Um, Rob, awesome. well, I was holding out because I thought you wanted to wait for the Roseanne guy. But if you want to come on the show uh, solo, you, you know, I'm going to have everybody on. Yeah, I'll, I'll it's check not, in I'm not picking. I just, I just happen to have some. I, I, I just happen to have friends who are comics because I've been a comic for almost 20 years. So nice. I have people that I could kind of call in some favors from. And they were great. Levy was great. Yeah. Uh, Shuli was great. Uh, I had Ryan on that I've known for years at Compound Media. I had who I've worked with for for years. Yeah. So you know, it's been it's been a nice roster. And of you know, so you, far, you've been a part of this show for a while now. And uh, I'm not an actual comic. I you know I do comedy with my friends. I know and stuff. But but just uh, again, just tell the audience how brilliant I am as a host, uh, and I love hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> you want, you want. Wait, you just said you weren't. You just said you weren't funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I always compliment you. I I actually compliment Rob in the in text. He does. Privately, him that he does a great job because in Rob Texas. knows how to take. Because Rob grab Rob. What'd you say, Bobby? In Texas, only in Texas. That's the only time you compliment him. <laughs> yeah. uh, in Texas, in the state, and I don't, and I only go to yeah. Texas once a year. <laughs> hey, Rob, I think this is going to be a problem. This guy's from Baltimore. I don't know if he's going to be able to understand half the shit we're about. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm from Texas. <laughs> I thought we were going to have yeah. a problem with Chris from West Virginia, but fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, back to Rob. Uh, I Bobby, you interrupted Ron a compliment. His anyway. hosting skills. <laughs> Rob knows because you know what Rob gets his balls broken on the regular and he takes it and he knows yeah. how to use the drama to steer the ship in the right direction. He makes, mm -hmm. he makes a good radio and that's what I like about Rob. Now, now it's oh, wow. Chris's turn to say what he lobby. Yeah. Uh, I like, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, I like Kish Kish. Yeah. yeah. Kish is great. Oh, we're talking. Compliment. Yeah. 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 Shout Chris is like, yes, I will. People. No, Chris is the man of the people. He'll compliment me in private. He's like, he's like, oh, I love the chat room. And he's like, and a lot of people are like, Chris, we love you on Levy Land because you give it to Rob. You really give it to him. So then he goes and he like trashes me to everybody. He's like, this is what the people want. You know, it's uh, yeah, you know, because he gets under your skin. The f the funniest moments are when you guys are uh, when you walk out when you quit is is probably the best part of every show. Yeah, when you, I think you actually I know, wrote I it down quit, last but... time. You like wrote a letter to, the, to Twitter. They're like, dear I'm Twitter, sorry, uh, I will yeah. no longer have to be on the show. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of Twitter, sorry, but Rob, <laughs> we're back. Oh, God. What's going on here, Sean? Why is everybody that. breaking up? Yeah. Sean, are we having uh, tech, technical difficulties? Sean yeah, Sean. We got the flow back. What's that? Play that. What are you playing there? Let me hear this. This is from uh, last time when you got when you got into it. Rob, are you back? Are you back on Twitter? Twitter? Jay Valentine wants wants to know, and and there's several other people. They want you to get back on Twitter. We don't understand. Um, you have a show to promote. Why, why did I go it. on Twitter? Yeah, you have a That's show a to promote. Shit. 
I can promote it on uh, anything, Facebook. You guys, I have you and Bob and 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 Zen and and Bobby Fran to promote everything on Twitter. Yeah. Why do I need to? People are like, yeah. we want Rob Saul on Twitter so we can try to get <laughs> under his skin. We want him to have a couple cocktails and flip out on Twitter and get suspended <laughs> for the seventeenth time and set up an eighteenth account. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm done. I, I I put it. Yeah, I put in an appeal. <laughs> I, I put in like so far three appeals to have my original account, my first ever account, which was like 15 accounts ago at Rob Saw um, reinstated. If they reinstate that, I'll come back to Twitter. That's my rule. So if you start tweeting Elon Musk, um, folks, <laughs> if you want me that bad on Twitter, at Rob Saw, just my name, to unsuspend that account, and uh, I will be back on Twitter. That's what you have to do I think to get me back. Uh, I think Owen has a better chance of getting to Canada than getting that reinstated <laughs> by Elon Musk. So, yeah. Uh, listen, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, Twitter is just a, it's very it's a very hateful place, and everybody thinks they're funny and and, and comics, and, but it's really mostly just hateful stuff. And it's like, oh, that's funny. I can't take a joke, and it's like, oh boy, you just, uh, you know. Just told me to kill myself and rubbed it in that my ex-wife fucked my cousin and uh, did that. I, and I get it. Yeah, oh, come. they were just kidding. That deserves yeah, three laughy faces. That's a joke. I know. It's uh, and, yeah. uh, and that's what it is. It's like people now think they could be so negative. Just, I mean, just brutal. And they're like, oh, you can't take it. What are you doing? Like, Zen, are, are you? Uh, do you agree or disagree? Well, you know, as a stand-up comedian, I uh, I find that you're going to always have trolls, whether yes. it's on YouTube or on Twitter. But what I what I've just put in my head the the mentality and Bobby take notes, Chris take notes. The mentality yes. is these people will not reveal their identities. You have your identity out there. Everybody knows yeah. what I look like. People can find me. They know my name for a living these people are such faggots they have to fuck they have to hide their faces they have to hide their identities just so they can be shitty uh to people who aren't hiding so i don't really pay it any mind if you want to come at me that's why i i don't that's why i respect gino for the fact that if he's gonna fucking you lost you and, and be you, shitty yeah. with you well you know, listen, I can't speak for him personally, but all I can say is at least you know that's Gino. But if he's doing yeah. it on other – if people are using other identities to, to go at you, then they're yeah. – that's just gay. That's just being that shitty. Is. Like, everyone, like Bobby – I give Bobby a response. Bobby, everyone knows who Bob is. Everyone knows yeah. who Chris is. Everybody knows who you are. They can attack you. Yeah. It's easy. They can attack your family because they know yeah. who you are. So I don't pay yeah, it any mind, like you know, and – I know. It's just, it's just supposed there to be, is some decorum to, to this. Well, Mar Mary, Mary does my social media, and if she can get me a Twitter up and run it, uh, then you'll have a Rob Saul Twitter. And, but, uh, yeah, you know, because Mary doesn't care if people call me uh, the F word and uh, attacks my fat. Well, she cares, but she won't respond. But, you know. Who's, Ma uh, who's Mary? Which Yorkshire Terrier is that? Mary. No, Mary. You know, Mary. Uh, Mary's, oh, my publicist and, uh, Mary's my publicist and social media manager. She's in the Rob Soul show. She's about to close oh, the yeah. Library. Another another person that does another person that doesn't get paid. Yeah. <laughs> another full timer. Listen, <laughs> when I start getting paid, you all start getting paid. Don't, don't, we'll see. How are we looking, uh, Sean? Uh, Keith, uh, Keith in with us yet? It's amazing. Amazing how the show froze up on that part. When I get, you guys will get. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, when I get oh, self-edited. Yeah. 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 yeah, you're breaking up, Chris. You're breaking up, Bobby. You're breaking yeah. up, Andy. Yeah, right. <laughs> What's that? You want to get paid, uh, Sean? I can't hear anything. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Uh, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> That doesn't make Patreon. sense. Patreon.com slash Levy Land. If you go to Patreon.com slash Levy Land, <laughs> you can get some extra Levy Land shows, some extra cute. Saul shows, uh, all that. And, uh, you know, join the family. 
Join the love, uh, extra shows, everything. And uh, that's, all I, that's all I have to say about that. Sean, what's going on? We got Keith in with a shatter. What's going on? <laughs> that's all I got to say about Happy that. Go Becky said uh, Mary was responsible for those TikToks. <laughs> no, Mary, Mary had no control. Poor Mary. Mary, I, I should have told Mary I had a TikTok. She would have she would have nipped that in the bud and she she would have been like, Rob, stop. Uh you know, wrong, Mary Sean. is very uh uh, Mary, Mary has gone on my Twitter and seen some stuff and, uh, and she's reached out to me and she's tough. She's like, Rob, you got to fucking knock it off. You know, Mary, that's why I need Mary. She's, Mary is, she's sweet. Uh, it seems like the sweetest lady ever. So I don't is. know. She how. is the sweetest lady, but if you yeah. piss her off, she, and then, and that piss, that pisses her off. Cause she's out, like you said, nobody's getting paid. So she's, she's busting her ass helping, uh, you know, the show. And, and when I do stuff that she thinks is ruining, uh, and taking it down, she's, uh, she's going to let me know about it. <laughs> so I don't even, yeah. I don't even know if she's still, she's probably cause of the show. Now she knows about the TikToks. Well, she does. I don't know if she keeps up with all the Levy lands, but yeah, yeah. She probably wouldn't be happy about those TikToks. They are uh, not flattering. It's uh, uh, did uh, Keith stand us up? He might, you know, because uh, he was all good, and I sent him the information, and uh, I never heard back. And then I, I, I text him after Levy land, or not text him, emailed him, and said, uh, yeah. "Hey, just wanted to confirm you have everything, and you'll be here." So he's, but he's I, an artist. It, it, he's going to take his time. He'll probably just yes, fashionably in. late. He's an yes. artist. He just, yeah. you know, he, this is what he's used to. He's he's temperamental. He needs a rider. You know, do you yeah. have his M and M's ready? Do you have all the stuff that he uh, M and M's all red M and M's? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I it said, uh, "I used to." Be Rob is like a child looking out the window, waiting for Keith to pull up in the driveway. <laughs> yes, I'm like, Daddy, are you home? Um, no, yeah. yeah I, I, I wonder if uh, I, I should ask Keith that if, if, if he comes on, if it, you know, they had any, they had any demands because uh, I used to work as an entertainment technician when all these uh, artists would come in and they would have like a list. Of, oh, you know, come on, we we've okay. covered this story, dude. Tell them what your entertainment technician was. What did you do for Beyonce? I I. I Listen, I would. My job was. It was her uh, flip flop I, 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 holder. Her, no, I. Uh, what happened was, is, uh, I. Warmer. My job was to run around on stage. There was fans everywhere, and wherever Beyonce was, I had to hold up the fan and make sure her hair was blowing on stage. But uh, that's the entertainment technician. Yeah. Yes, technician. I, there's all different roles for that. But ladies and gentlemen, our special guest, effects uh, engineer. Is, is, was with the band Chicago for 26 years. He is a legendary guitarist. Let's show a little bit of his solo there, uh, uh, Sean. When you love somebody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, Keith Allen. How are you, Keith? What's happening, guys? How you been, brother? It's been a while. The last been... time I talked to you, we were getting ready to do the um, Florida shows. I was going to come, but uh, I've been out of commission. I'm actually just returning to work tomorrow. I had back surgery in uh, the beginning of October. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. but uh, I, I, I saw the shows with the players, and uh, the players is you, uh, Jeff Coffey, uh, my idol Bill Champlin, and uh, John Paris from Earth, Wind, and Fire, and uh, it looked amazing. Did you did you have a good time? Uh, you guys are doing more shows, aren't you? Yeah, we got more stuff on the books for 2023. Um, we did four shows. Well, I guess technically five. Um, the first one we did with uh, Tris on drums, which was sort of a last minute thrown together thing. Um, mm -hmm. And then we did, uh, yeah, like four more. It'd be good if we could string enough together where we could actually play the music without having to think about it too much. <laughs> but, hey, no, but it's been a lot of fun. I, 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 
I was sending stuff, uh, information for you, because I'm dying to get you guys in Atlantic City. Are you guys coming to Atlantic City? Is anything uh, happening with that? Uh, I was trying to get uh, some things with Atlantic City going with the players. Or any any hooks yet? Or what's going on? You know what? Um, I don't know about Atlantic City, but it sounds like a fun time to me. I mean, I'd, I'd love yeah. to play Atlantic City with the group. I mean, it, it's a really cool thing because we basically sort of uh, hand pluck um, these great horn players out of the University of Miami down here in yeah. Florida, which everybody coming out of that school is like a monster. And, yeah. um, and then you got <clears throat> sort of an interesting melding of eras of Chicago because, you know, I was there for the, for the Bill years and I was there for the Jeff years, but never yeah. really played with Jeff and Bill together. And yeah. those two guys really seem to, they blend so well and vocally and, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm just the, uh, odd man out singing the bar baritone background vocals that, uh, um, well, although I, I, I might lobby, I might lobby for one, uh, uh, one lamb tune, uh, that I could sing, you know, because when I, when I was in the group, um, uh -huh. they kept asking me to sing tenor vocals, right? So, yeah. you know, at times I, I was singing old days and if you leave me now and the, but yeah. really my natural wheelhouse is more in the Robert Lamb realm. Oh, you know, I can kind of, I could sort of hold that down and then you got Bill doing the Bill thing and Jeff doing the Jeff thing and it, it works. And, and, and John is a, a monster drummer, as you probably know. Yeah. Uh, you know, now, let me but, tell you, uh, I, I got to make a, a request, maybe even a demand, Keith, because I am uh, okay. uh, very upset because not very, really upset. But listen, my favorite part of uh, different Chicago shows, first of all, the way uh, Jeff Coffey sings You're the Inspiration is uh, brilliant. And then Bill's backgrounds and his fillers in there that he does, you know, at the end, always on, you know, no one needs you more than I. And then your guitar solo. I said, the three of these guys together, I can't believe I was appalled that you're the inspiration isn't on the set list. Uh, I mean, the three, the three of you guys and the drummer, of course, but I mean, uh, some of the best part, of, I mean, that you're, you're, we played that you coming in the show that your uh, guitar solo on you're the inspiration is it's fucking brilliant man well thank you um you know what i will uh i will put in a request for that because <laughs> yeah. you know with within within the group um you know doing the david foster stuff the logical one was hard to have it to break because it really is a a legitimate duet between Jeff and Bill. Yeah. Um, so that was the one we chose of the, the Foster era. But yeah. I have also come to realize that I don't have very many guitar solos in this show. I'm playing <laughs> solo on, I'm soloing on Make Me Smile. I'm yeah. soloing on, I believe, a short solo in the middle of Look Away. And Bill is soloing on the outro, oh, and yeah. then twenty five or six to four, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much role. it. You got to do the year of the inspiration. I mean, that's my that was always my favorite part of seeing a Chicago show. I mean, I, I haven't seen Chicago live since Bill left, but uh, when Bill was in Chicago, I mean, your guitar solo and then him at the end, just you know, singing all the "No one needs you more than I do." Yes, I do, and he's you know doing all that crazy stuff in the background. I mean, I was like, I loved it. It was it was brilliant. He knows the lyrics, like Rob. It. You don't gotta sing it. <laughs> I know, I know. I sound exactly like I, I'm just like, yeah. 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 Oh, Remember man. that part where you uh, sing Bill, like this? Yeah. You know, you know, one of the amazing things about being in this band with, yeah. well, with both Jeff and Bill, but, yeah. but Bill, Bill in particular, I remember one time, I don't know if I shared this the last time we were on, um, but years and years ago, we were doing Color My World. Mm -hmm. And and Bill just started making mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake in the piano part. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, he just launched into, like, Kansas City 
you know, a blues <laughs> tune and yeah. just started singing it. And, and it was like, I love the fearless nature that Bill has of like, I'm not, nothing is going to rattle me. I will power through anything. And the crowd yeah. freaking loved it. I mean, yeah. it was obvious that he completely. Oh, I thought you meant in rehearsals. This was live on stage. Oh, my God, no. This was in front of like 12,000 people. Wow. He was like, da, 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 e -a 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 Kansas City. Yeah. And he just, he just started going, and the crowd was like, yeah. The, the other guys in the band maybe didn't give him uh, so much fanfare, but. Hey, what are you going to yeah. do? <laughs> I know. They really seem to, to not like him. I watched that um, um, what was that last documentary, The Last Band on Stage, and yeah. uh, they really went through. And what really uh, got me was at the end of it, the credits, they pretty much named almost everybody on stage that's ever been with Chicago and thanked them, from Chris Pinnock to Donnie Dacus to uh, the, the fill-ins like Nick Lane <laughs> And Bill was just completely left out. I mean, I said, wow. I mean, I was just, uh, I mean, they they really uh, seem to have, uh, and, and I get it. People don't get along, and I, and I get it. There's bad blood there. But, I mean, Bill Champlin was a legendary part of Chicago. He was then there almost 30 years. He, he brought in David Foster uh, during 16 and was a part of that big pop with them and uh now it's like uh, they pretend the guy never even existed I yeah know. i mean i don't i don't totally understand it myself although um <clears throat> the circumstances under which he sort of entered the group um were kind of uh um you know less than um desirable it'd be kind of like uh you know chicago for all those years had been a one keyboard player band right yeah and and robert for reasons we won't necessarily discuss i think everybody knows it's all out there but did, he yeah. was unable to participate in making the um chicago 16 record because <clears throat> he was doing other things and so they hired bill and so I think that sort of was part of the, the you know, the rub there of that, yeah. you know, Chicago was never meant to be a two keyboard player band, even though yeah. it was for 30 some years, you know, for 40 years, however long it's been now, which, yeah, is, which, I, I, which I think is, which I think is funny because, you know, after Bill uh, uh, left the group, they immediately hired another second keyboard player. And then after yeah. Lou left, they hired another second keyboard player. Like, I'm glad okay. you said that. That's what I was just getting ready to say to you. I'm like, well, then why are they hiring? Uh, but, uh, you know, it's uh, it's just, uh, I mean, you know, you know Rob, Robert would be perfectly uh, capable of uh, uh, playing all the uh, Foster stuff. And, and they really don't need a second guy, except for the fact that, Usually that second guy is covering the sort of R&B soulful vocals of Terry Cat. So, yeah. like, if, if, if I had in my throat uh, Terry Cat's uh, voice box, yeah. it maybe wouldn't have needed a second keyboard player. Because yeah. then I could have covered all that, you know. I always yeah. thought that... Um, if Stevie Ray Vaughan had had lived and survived, he would have been an amazing um, addition to that band, you know. Oh, and sure. not that I would have wanted to wish myself out of a gig, but <laughs> if you listen to his you listen to his vocals and the way he played guitar. I mean, he was like a very uh, Terry Kath esque guy, you know. Yeah. So. But, now, uh, now, Keith, you. I would have liked to have heard that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, Keith, you were, uh, I mean, you were raised uh, by great parents, had a great family. Uh, you ended up becoming a, a musician, but your, 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 your parents said you have to give a, get a college degree first. Uh, right. And then you can be a musician. 
I I heard that when you were in college, that you Chicago ended up playing at your college back. I think it was when Bill Champlin first joined and uh, uh, Chicago played at your college. And uh, the person I talked to said that he didn't tell me the story, but he said you had a great story about uh, meeting Peter Cetera the original tenor vocalist from Chicago. <laughs> when you, uh, when you, uh, when they were playing at the college. Yeah. So, um, the band was on the Chicago 16 tour supporting, uh, the new record that Foster produced and hard yeah. to say, I'm sorry, was actually not even a hit yet. Um, that's why they were still playing like colleges and, smaller venues and whatnot it's once hard yeah. to say i'm sorry hit then they started playing the bigger uh bigger venues again but um i uh, got i got a poster for it somewhere i think it might have even been in late 81 not even in oh, 82. Wow. um Jeez. no wait no that that couldn't be possible because i graduated high school in 82 so it would have been early 82. anyway long story short uh, you know, the band was just on fire. I mean, they were, you know, kicking ass and taking names because they were trying to, trying to get back on the radio, trying to get their, their audience back. And, um, and, and me and a good buddy of mine, uh, went and saw the show and, uh, it was probably the best Chicago concert I've ever witnessed from the other side of the glass. In other words, yeah. you know, yeah. being in the audience. And, um, you know, Champlin was brand new. Lamb was 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 uh, clean and, and great. Yeah. Satera looked like he'd been to a, um, you know, some type of health farm. You know, he had yeah. the bandana on and he was all fit yeah. and trim. And, and Seraphin was on fire. Chris Pinnock was ripping. Anyway, so after the show, I went out and, and stood by the, uh, the backstage doors waiting for the band to come out. And the first thing I saw was I saw Chris Pinnock, like kind of milling around by the, by the double doors. They were glass. He was smoking a yeah. cigarette after the show. And, and I remember thinking to myself, man, there's the, that, that's the luckiest you know, motherfucker in rock and roll right there. He's got the guitar gig yeah. with Chicago. And I'm thinking, wow, this is this is really cool. So, you know, and at the time, of course, this was not normal stuff to me. Later on, I would learn about, you know, the tour manager bringing the band out and putting them in the two bands and sending them off yeah. to the hotel. But anyway, everybody kind of gathered together. They came out, they got in the vans. And Cetera got in the shotgun seat in one of the, the two uh, passenger vans. And I I sort of walked up to the glass, like, pretty close. <laughs> and he kind of kind of looked at me. And he, you know, it's back before electric windows, believe it or not, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, had to roll the, he had to roll the window down. And he's like, hey, man, what's up? And I go, how do you, how do you sing so high? And he looked at me and he goes, he looked at me and he goes, it's, it's just my voice, man. And he just cranked the window right back up. He put the window back up. <laughs> totally blew me off. And, yeah. you know, I knew the answer, of course. I just caught in the moment. I had no no idea what to say to him. But, and who uh, do you think years later you'd be on stage with Chicago singing his number one hit? If you leave yeah. me now, this kid was uh, <laughs> knocking on the window saying, uh, "How do you sing so high?" Well, I mean, and if you want to get it, get in, get even a little more um, deep into it, um, and I don't know if it's still this way, but for a, for a long time, if you went on uh, Google and you just put in Chicago, if you leave me now live, mm -hmm. the top one that would come up was me singing it at the A and E live by request. Uh, and, yeah. and A and E live by request was about one week after I had started singing that song with the band. 
And uh, so basically I went from not singing anything to about four or five of Satara's tunes to being on live national television, um, you know, singing. I, I mean, I was freaking out, you know. Wow. And, uh, but uh, yeah, it was it's kind of a trip, man. I mean, you know. So years later, though, as, as you're in Chicago, you end up getting on a flight and you ended up, sitting next to Peter Cetera on a flight. Now tell me about this. Do you immediately, I, I know you immediately recognized him. Does he know who you are when you sit next to him, that you are the guitarist and background and sometimes lead vocalist for Chicago when he uh, sits next to you on the plane? Well, it was a little different than, than that, actually. He, um, I was, I was in line. I think we were in Atlanta, and it was a short flight. It was about thirty-five minute flight from Atlanta to Nashville. And uh -huh. at the time, I believe Peter had a had a place in Nashville, and, and I was living there as, as well. I was yeah. coming off the road, so was he. And I I looked up and I saw him in line, standing up at the almost the front of the line. So I, I um, um, both of us were in the first class cabin. Um, I, I walked up to him before we got on the plane and I said, Hey man, I, I just wanted to say hi. Um, I don't know if you know who I am, but you know, I've been at the time, I think I'd been in the band for 20 years like that. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I've been the uh, lead guitar player for your ex-wife for the last 20 years. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> she said, how do you hit those notes so high? <laughs> yeah, we we we, to we talked about that on the plane. He didn't remember that that one, yeah. but uh, but he did say um, he was like, "Oh yeah, man." He goes, uh, "You know, great to see you." And uh, um, so we got on the plane, and I was sitting in a window seat, and he was in the aisle across from me, and the guy next to me was you know some businessman, some was traveling. And mm -hmm. Peter actually was the one that asked the guy next to me if if he would trade seats with him oh, so wow. that we could chat. Oh, that's awesome. And I, that's thought cool. that, I thought that was really cool. And you know what? You know what I learned in that half hour of talking to him? Some things I can't disclose or tell you about, but... Well, what you can <laughs> one tell of me. Things, <laughs> one of the things that I did learn was that he is absolutely, without question one of those guys okay i mean you know robert jimmy walt lee uh mm. danny peter they're they're kind of all the same guy they all got famous at whatever seven eight years old out of the mm. south side of chicago and you know i was sitting there talking to him and some of his mannerisms i'd be like wow that was that was kind of very Walt like, you know, or yeah. wow, that was very Jimmy like, you know, and and uh, he was very funny and he was very engaging and he was uh, very nice, you know. I I mean, I can certainly see, like I said, that he is one of them where, you know, they they've butted heads over the years because they all do, yeah. and. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's it, it was pretty it was pretty cool. We 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 talked about a bunch of bunch of different stuff, and he was uh, pretty forthcoming with with things. And and I I sort of have a knack for for impressions, and uh -huh. I, I did a couple of my uh, I did my best Walt Parasator, and I had him I had him uh, cutting up and you know falling out of his seat laughing. <laughs> to, Let's to hear it, Walt. <laughs> let's hear know. it let's hear it yeah. what was your walt parasader impression talking about the Jimi hendrix story or what <laughs> it's uh no, but oh, let, 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 out of, let me uh, out, of, out of respect for out of respect for walt i won't do that he's yeah. uh yeah uh, no, i know it. but now now i'm talking to chris he's saying ah no listen let him respect the guy but let me ask you this though without being disrespectful Fast forwarding to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, 
everybody thought hell would have froze over before Peter Cetera would re re reunite with Chicago. It seemed like right. the yeah, uh, it seemed like though the wheels were in motion and that Peter Cetera he was being inducted whether he was there or not into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Chicago. You were there, um, which I mean. Uh, I'll sidetrack to this later. There's a lot of guys that have been with the band 20 years or more that, you know, should have been inducted with the band, but they were only inducting the original band that formed in uh, 67. But Satara looked like he was uh, considering and the band was talking to him and pointing him on stage. And I remember being excited about this because I said, geez, Peter Satara back with Chicago would have never thought that would happen. And then it comes to what they're going to sing. Peter Cetera wanted the key dropped for 25 or six to four in the band. Uh, we're right. doing, and I don't know where you stand on this, but my, it's like, who cares? Peter Cetera coming back, drop the fucking key. Like, I, I don't know. Like, what do you, uh, were you, were you, I, I know you probably weren't, an instrumental decision, uh, you know, maker on this, but, uh, as, as, a as the guitarist for Chicago, that's going to be there. What were you thinking? Were you thinking like, no, we can't desecrate 25 or six to four by dropping the key. Or were you like more like, uh, some of the other fans were like, let's drop the key. Let's have the guy back on stage. It'll be a, a magical experience for fans. Well, here's the thing. And, and, and again, I, I would liken it to a, a divorced couple. Um, it wasn't about dropping the key, obviously. It was about control. Um, it yeah. was about, you know what I mean? It was like they they, they, they all kind of just pushed back on each other enough times where he finally threw his hands up and said, you know what, I don't, I don't want to do this. Not, not worth yeah. my time. And, yeah, because um, didn't he even offer to sing "Feeling Stronger" every day in the original key, and that was uh, turned I, down, or I don't know. I think so. You know, he had been doing a lot of orchestra dates, and yeah. and had kind of a cool, kind of had a cool arrangement of twenty five that was down mm -hmm. in the key of E instead of A, and yeah, and it was it was way darker and slower and kind of. Um, but very cool. And, um, yeah, you know, I don't, you know, I saw Peter live probably two years after the rock and roll hall of fame. And he was hitting every note and all the notes that he would have needed to, to hit, to sing the song in the original key. So he didn't want yeah. to change it so much because he couldn't sing it. It was more like a thing where that's what, the way he had been singing it and um and and maybe a little bit in his head that maybe i can't hit those notes but you know it's it's a weird thing when you see a guy like that who is um still uh uh i mean i i noticed when we when we went and saw him um god this is probably only like four years ago maybe uh, yeah. My wife and I went, and uh, he changed the key on a lot of the songs, but then there were a few duets that he did with uh, Amy Grant and um, a couple other, which not all those yeah, artists were there, but Kim Keys would sing with him. And he left yeah, them in the I original it, keys, yeah. and, he, and he was hitting everything. And it was like, wow, you know, it's like a metal block, you know. I, yeah. I don't know if I can run that fast anymore. Well, if you don't <laughs> believe you can, maybe you can't. But he, he was, you know, maybe in his head, he didn't realize he was hitting a, a C when he was, uh, you know, when he was singing Next Time I Fall, but didn't want to sing the C in 25 or 6 to 4. <laughs> you know, not realizing it was the same note. <laughs> were you uh, were you looking forward to playing with Satara? Was that something, or were you oh, uh, kind of neutral on it? You know what? You to... I, I was I was freaking out when I heard that the band was going into the Hall of Fame. I, yeah. I, I thought to myself, "Wow, I'm going to get to more than likely play the guitar role with 
the six original members of Chicago. Yeah. And that was like flipping me out, right? I mean, it would have been Jimmy, Walt, Lee, Robert, Danny, Peter, and me. Yeah. Um, then I started hearing that the Rock Hall wanted to um, potentially put another Hall of Fame musician in the guitar chair oh, and, no. not, and, not, and not have me play. Now, you've nuts. been in the band over 20 years at this point. Like, why? Why? Uh, well, just to make more of a spectacle out of it. Like, I think I, I heard rumblings of uh, Carlos Santana, um, you know, maybe Jeff Beck, which, you know, I'd love to see Jeff Beck play 25 64 Chicago, but not at the expense of me being on stage in right. the Hall of Fame. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> So then when, but then when Peter kind of fell out, so it's kind of a weird thing because maybe um, had Satara done it, I would have, I would have been a spectator. So yeah. at least I got to perform and I felt like I, I held my own and um, it was great to get to play with Danny. Um, never having set foot on stage with the man. Um, when we went into rehearsals, uh, I remember we started playing uh, Saturday in the Park, and um, mm. you know, at this point, had we had Pro Tools rigs and click tracks and and mm -hmm. some background vocals in there and stuff like that. But when we went into rehearsal, you know, Robert just started kind of banging out Saturday in the Park, and Danny came in on drums, and it was like putting on an old you know, slipper. It just felt right somehow. It was like, wow, this is this this is the record. This feels like the record. And then of course yeah. then we stopped about, you know, a minute in and then turned on the click track and it changed the feel of the whole thing. Um which yeah. I was not exactly happy with but you know what you know wasn't my call you know that's the way uh much like they didn't want to change a key for peter they weren't gonna yeah. lose the uh click track for danny and wow. and you know and but i understand that that's the way the band the band at the time that's the way they were doing things and so we you know and and most bands do so we weren't we weren't going to change you know, just for one guy. And I thought Danny did a great job. He said it good, you know, felt good. Now you were, Keith, you can were I ask you a Chicago. question? Can I ask you a question? Uh, can I ask you a question real quick, Keith? Uh, some of the fans want to know if your chair says Chicago or Chicano. <laughs> Chicano? Why would it say yeah, Chicago? Chicago. Oh, it says Chicago. All right, Chicago. Uh, Hell yeah, that's man. A Chicago. A lot of fans have been asking. Yeah. Uh, wow. I, I got this chair for a, a, a gift back, uh, I don't know, five or six <laughs> years ago for, for Christmas. <laughs> now, but, can I uh, ask you something? Yeah, about, it's awesome, man. Can I ask you something about your departure? <laughs> and, and if you don't want to answer, just say, never, you know, just tell me. But uh, I, you broke your wrist at a Chicago show. And, right. um, the, the guy, Tony, I, I don't even know, Tony, whatever, uh, stepped in oh yeah, and, and took your place. And uh, they act like he just happened to be there. But then there was an interview that someone sent me recently with Lee, uh, Lee Lofnane. And he was saying that Tony was always meant to be in the band and that he was there that night to watch the stage set up and that they had been grooming him to be the guitar player for Chicago. And it just happened to be uh, like coincidence. You broke your wrist, which you obviously broke your w wrist. I'm not discounting that, but they were saying they were already grooming. Why were they grooming another guitar player for Chicago at this point? And if you don't want to answer. Well, this, well, you know what? I mean, as far as I know, um, mm -hmm. everybody had been asked to get an understudy for COVID purposes um, okay. so that it, if somebody got sick, 
we had a guy that could just step in immediately and we wouldn't have mm. to cancel shows because, you know, you start canceling shows and you got breach contractors and a lot of money's being lost. And um, so everybody was, was kind of getting an understudy. Mm -hmm. And um, I was kind of dragging my feet on, I had a guy mm -hmm. and, um, but I hadn't really gotten him up to speed and gotten the information to, to Lee and the management. And so I guess Lee went and found a guy who had played in Sterra's band uh -huh. and on his own accord went ahead and had Tony uh, prepare to learn the show. And uh -huh. um, uh, in case something happened to me and you know, the irony of it is, is that he lived in Nashville and we were playing in Louisville, which is only about two hours away. So he had driven up to watch the show just to get a better idea of like the stage set up and how that all works. And I broke my arm two hours before the show and he just happened to be there. So it was fate, you know, and um, um, I was literally... You know, I was talking to Lou Pardini going, well, maybe you can cover some of the guitar parts. And Lee just came over and said, you know, hey, um, you know, Tony Obrada is here. Um, I've had him learn the show. Can you go up and show him how his how your rig works? And so uh, I'm like oh. holding my broken arm wow. going, OK, so bank one, preset one is a clean sound. And bank three is more vintage sounds and the face shifter is up here and the flanger is over there. And then they put me in a town car and sent me home. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, arm? man, it was, uh, it was a real, um, I had, I had my suitcase and it was packed full of, um, electronics and probably weighed 70 pounds. And I was, um, uh, I showed up at the venue early because I wanted to, I, I took an Uber over. So I had my suitcase with me and I was, you know how you take a suitcase with the, the handle pulled up? Oh, yeah, and you yeah. you just kind of yeah. lower it down each step, oh. you know. And it got about five steps down away from me. And when it dropped to like the sixth step, it pulled me off the top of the flight of stairs and my arm was in my arm was inside of the handle and it just Ooh. snapped it so oh and that's and that's the, and that's the last time i'm uh you, you before that i mean going to that show you you've never played with chicago since you just uh after that you decided to uh to separate yeah i mean you know it was it was kind of a um it was kind of a, a god shot in a way because i sort of i sort of thought to myself you know when i was when i got home and i had been on the road for almost 27 years and probably for about eight months a year out of every year and i'd missed almost every birthday, every anniversary, um, kids graduating from high school, from middle school. Um, and I just kind of thought, you know what? I'm not going to be able to play for probably six months anyway. Yeah. Might be, time, might be time for a change. And they were out there soldiering on with, with Tony and he was doing a great job, a great job. And, um, so, you know, it was kind of a mutual parting of the, of the ways, you know, I mean, I don't hold any, any animosity toward those guys at all. I, as a matter of fact, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. And I mean, I pretty much got to check every box, um, that I had on my list of like, you know, when I was 20 years old and I was like, gee, I want to be a musician when I grow up, you know, and. I got to check pretty much all the boxes. 
And, I think um, the cool part is is that you went from what you went from watching that concert, standing behind the building, watching them saying, "Wow, that guy has the coolest fucking job." To having the coolest fucking job, and and right, so yeah. was there ever any point in your career when you was coming out of a building and you looked around and seen somebody, you know, like in the crowd? Because usually after the show, there's people always out back and stuff like that. Did you ever look around and think, "God, I was that guy one one at one point"? Oh, absolutely, and it and it certainly, um, you know, I was very very mindful of the fact that. Um, you know, if somebody came up to me and was gushing with some kind of praise or, you know, sometimes, it, you know, I would not feel like I had a good night and mm -hmm. some somebody would come up and be like, man, you're, you, you played so great. And I learned a long time ago to just say thank you and not argue with them because mm -hmm. it, yeah. It, 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 yeah. it doesn't do anybody any good for me to go like, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, kid. I suck yeah. tonight, you know. Oh, <laughs> I, I blew this part in here, and I, you know, I broke a string there, and um, because you're you're almost diminishing their, you know, hey man, how do you sing so high? Yeah. Up, <laughs> you know? So I don't. Well, talking. I, I didn't want to be that talking guy. about I'm checking. Not, not the, not, not that Peter, not, not that Peter was rude, but he was yeah. just kind of like, he was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. next question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we're talking about checking all the boxes. You made that. You were uh, part of the band for like twenty-seven years almost, and uh, you had how many? I was wondering how many of those moments where you had those pinch yourself moments. You know, you toured with bands like uh, you're touring with uh, John Paris of Earth, Wind, and Fire. I love Earth, Wind, and Fire. I like Cool and the Gang. What is what? What is a moment you can point at and say, "Wow, I made it because I'm here playing this, and this this is why I'm doing this." Do you have any of those moments you can think of? There's a ton of them. Um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, yeah. um, for yeah. sure. Um, we played several times for um uh president clinton we did his uh we did his library opening we did a uh a, a show for so him. did monica <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> it's good uh, yeah i'm just kidding we, did, we, we, we played at the ford theater for him before he was uh, nominated or elected um you know, I mean, oh my God, the tours with Earth, Wind, and Fire sold out at Madison Square Garden, the LA Those Forum. Were the best. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, three nights sold out at the Hollywood Bowl with the uh, LA Symphony when Jeff was yeah. in the band. Those were like, that was like unbelievable. Um, you know, and then there was a lot of, lot of TV stuff, you know, we did. Tonight Show several times, Today Show, Good Morning America, Rosie O'Donnell. Um, never did get to do Letterman and never did get to do SNL, which I wish we would have. But um, wow. they had moved yeah. on to... They you did Leno, though. Leno you did the Tonight Show. Oh, yeah, with Leno. Yeah. Not um, do you think Leno. that... Yeah. Do you think that maybe down the road that you and the other band members, even though you guys don't get along very well... I mean, as far as everybody in the group getting along, do you think that you all can at one point agree that uh, the Doobie Brothers are assholes? Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 you guys, you guys played with the Doobie Brothers, haven't you? <laughs> oh shit! Wow. A couple of those guys are my my good friends, and uh, they're they're definitely anything but assholes. They're they're good dudes. Uh, and Michael McDonald is probably one of the most unassuming, um, humble, um, nice people you ever want to meet. There's no rock star. And that's that's kind of part of what uh, um, I think is kind of cool about those guys. It's like, it's like Chicago can never get it together with Peter to do a show together. Only one show. The Rock and Roll Hall thing, yeah. anything. And the dudes seem to be able to, like, yeah, come on back, McDonald, you know, and he'll come back yeah. to even a tour with him. 
and then leave again. And, you know, they don't all agree on everything. And, you know, no, Pat Simmons, uh, or not Pat Simmons, but Tom Johnston wasn't really happy about the direction the band took when McDonald showed up. But, um, but they still, you know, managed to be cool with each other and, and, and respect what, what each other does. So, you know, I respect that out of them. Yeah, because I was uh, kidding about the Doobie he, Brothers, but uh, Steely Dan, fuck those guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, Keith, as the <laughs> as uh, Keith, as the holiday approaches, uh, I, I put the clip up, and people seem to love it. I uh, of the Chicago Christmas album. That's the only Christmas album I listen to. I love it, and your arrangement on "Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas." I talked about. It. I know I joked and said. God bless the uh, the cold virus that infected your body to where Bill sang it. But uh, it was uh, <laughs> it's just my it's my it's my favorite Christmas arrangement. Uh, I heard a story, and uh, I don't know if you can confirm this or, or deny it, but that when you were recording that ori original uh, Christmas album, the next door Black Sabbath was recording. And from what I heard, Ozzy Osbourne was over and like fascinated that you guys in a hundred degree weather in April were recording Christmas songs. Is that, uh, is that true? It, it, it's, it's it, was, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was actually closer. It was closer to July, I believe. And yeah, we were at, um, I want to, I want to say we were at A&M records and, and all of a sudden, Right in the middle of, I think Jason might have been doing a vocal on Silent Night, and uh, <laughs> we're sitting in the we're sitting in the control room, and they got the Christmas lights like all, you know, over the um, control room windows and the whole thing, and all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden Ozzy just comes busting into the control room <laughs> right in the middle of a take. And he basically took the room over for about an hour, and. Uh, <laughs> Roy Brunson produced, and we just sat there. He's had a Christmas and, in July. Yeah, he's got, yeah, I fucking quit drinking. Uh, you know, I don't fucking drinking. <laughs> you go, well, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's fucking cigarettes. Are more, this is more of a bitch than the alcohol. I can't, I can't fucking stop with this. You know, Merry Christmas to you guys, though. And, <laughs> it's like, that's a pretty the, that's the, a pretty good impression you would just I come to see if you had the bad on dude that is yeah. that is a great, that's a great yeah. impression that's a great impression fucking spot on man <laughs> christmas in july the, yeah. the prince the uh, prince of darkness the prince of darkness came in and overtook our our Christmas album sessions. You know? <laughs> that's a that's so, a that's fucking that's awesome. a fucking concert I would go to. Chicago and Black Sabbath together. <laughs> Holy shit. What a concert that would be. And hey, Chicago. We, should, we probably should have had Ozzy do have yourself a merry little Christmas. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. Oh, a merry oh, fucking Christmas. The jingle Christmas. bells. One, two, three. <laughs> Fuck off. A merry right. fucking Christmas. <laughs> 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 And Holy then instead, shit, uh, Keith, you could have done the backgrounds going, fucking Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Time. I, think someone, I think somebody might have been singing that in there, and I'm guessing it was Bill. Jason, oh, and, Jason and Bill, uh, true, true story, if you listen real close, in um, uh, Walking in a Winter Wonderland, you know, Jason and Bill uh -huh. were like, they were just, always cutting up in the studio and so they were uh -huh. i believe there is one or two spots where and it's a big stack of vocals so you can't really hear it so the background vocals going walk in walk in um yeah. something something we're walking walking christopher walking walk <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna listen for that in oh shit there. Oh no! <laughs> we uh -oh. lost him. He so that was his. That was his yeah, closer. He, that was his headline. Yeah, yeah. He he's oh, yeah. Mic drop. Oh, there he oh, is. We oh, thought we lost him. Man. We thought you were Christopher walking on us. You know what? You know what that was? That was John. John Paris was trying to call me. It made me drop the call. Uh, uh, oh shit! So you're like, you about you're like, I'm too busy. I'm on the Rob Saul show. 
Yeah. Let me right. ask you about John Paris too, as well, because the players, I mean, what a, what a lineup because, you know, I know originally there was a plan for bus number two, which was, you know, you, Lou Pardini, Jeff Coffey, and Tristan Bowden to go out there and, you know, start doing stuff, making new music. Lou Pardini somehow ended up, uh, thank God, because I'm, you know, I'm fucking crazy about Bill. So Bill Champlin's in there now. And uh, you guys, it's pretty much that with Jeff Coffey and, uh, and you. But John Paris is still on Earth, Wind and Fire. So if you guys book some shows and, and uh, John Paris is, you know, booked with Earth, Wind and Fire, do you have a, uh, a drummer lined up? Well, you know, I've got a Rolodex of drummers, um, but, uh, yeah. you know, actually, we were, we were actually talking about that um, just today because a, a couple of um, couple of gigs came up for July and um, John's not available in July. So we were <clears throat> just tossing around different different ideas. Um, you know, Ed Toast. I have an idea for you. What is that? <laughs> oh, I, I, well, it's an obvious idea. I mean, is uh, come on, is uh, would Tris be willing to do some show? Yeah. You know what? I mean, um, yeah. I I I don't <laughs> know for sure. He he yeah. did the actual first real yeah. players gig that we did, which was yeah. uh, it was thrown together real last minute, but um, the and I'm not to get too deep into it, but the um, the promoter kind of uh, stepped on the trademark of the band a little bit um, mm -hmm. by using the band's logo, Chicago logo, and we got oh, a little okay. bit of um, we got a little bit of pushback from it um, from yeah. the band, um, and so Tris kind of just was like, you know what, man, I I'm doing my I'm doing my yacht rock rock thing and. Maybe I don't necessarily, you know, want to push that yeah. envelope over here. Um, yeah. But we have but since I mean, that sort of. Well, we've we've since sort of ironed all that stuff out, and yeah. you know, we've got all kinds of documents that promoters have to sign, and we will not use the yeah. logo, and we won't, we won't, you know. It's always the promoter that fucks up stuff. Mark, well, you know, so uh, I don't know. You know, um, I, I would love for Tris to play. I mean, I, he's one of my one of my favorite drummers in the world. And I, I would. I mean, I would, that is just a version of of Chicago. I and not that you are Chicago, but I mean, you know, no offense, and I, you don't have to respond to that. The lineup of Chicago, I would never. It's just not my my thing. But seeing the players even without Tr but Tris would be just uh, to me that would just be like such a f fucking awesome lineup of just greats and not even just the Chicago but just musicians uh you know that uh, have all worked together yeah. and have a connection and Rob uh, is uh, Rob is actually Tris's new manager I don't know if you know that yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, you know, he's got, he's got of that deal he's like you guys <laughs> I have I have quality I have quality problems in that uh, you know if it's not John Paris who is like one of the best drummers on the earth um, it Absolutely. might be Tris it might be Ed Toth from the Doobie Brothers it could be Brian Dunn from Hall and Oates it might be oh, okay. um, uh, 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 Sonny Emery who used to play with Earth Wind and Fire who is now playing with uh, Eric Clapton. So I mean, we got a lot of guys that we can, a lot of guys that we could yeah. pluck from that do have connections to Chicago or Earth Wind or, um, you know, and who knows? You know, I don't, I don't know what what what, what exactly is going to happen. But like, if we, you know, let's say let's say John Paris can't do it, and Brian Dunn can, maybe we do a handful of Hall and Oates tunes in the show. You know. Because he brings yeah. that into the equation. He also was an average. And Daryl Hall man. and Bill Champlin have that similar uh, vocal style to where Bill can do a, a Hall and Oates song. I can imagine very well. Uh, Bill told me that he and he and Daryl on, on a couple things 
uh, did some background vocal dates together and said it was like yeah. really amazing because their phrasing and stuff was so sort of yeah. in alignment, you know. Daryl has a much more um, clear kind of tenor voice, and Bill is more a little more baritone um, R and B, you know, a little, yeah, little raspier. But the yeah. blend of those two guys would be, or apparently was, great. You know, I well, mean, yeah, they have a song. Uh, there's a song off of Bill's first solo album called "Single," called "We Both Tried," and Dara Hall does backgrounds on it, and it is a uh, uh, beautiful. I have it on vinyl. I have it on my uh, see. It, yeah, it's called uh, "Single." Is my favorite Bill Champlin album. It's like '78, and uh, yeah, yeah, there's a song called the ballad called we both tried with Daryl Hall singing on it with him. And it's, I mean, it is just smooth. Oh, and I beautiful. mean, and if I remember correctly, I think the rhythm section on that record was uh, mostly the Toto guys. You had Jeff Ricaro and David Hungate, and Luke at um, yeah. And then also Foster there was uh, Foster produced it. Yep. I think, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, not sure if Paige played on it, but I'm, I'm sure David played keys on it. Yeah, it's yeah. a great record. I mean, that if you listen to single and then you listen yeah. to Chicago 16, you can kind of hear yeah. the natural progression of Bill and David and then their influence on what became Chicago Foster. Well, era. and then you had Runaway. Runaway was like uh, released almost. Uh, in the same time frame of uh, of of Chicago sixteen, and uh, he kind of put that on that. That could have been a a big record, I think. But you know, right after that, it came out. He 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 went into Chicago, and Chicago sixteen blew up. Yeah, and um, oh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, there was a lot of cross pollination going on right around right around that early eighties period where the the Toto guys were working, were kind of Foster's guys. And, you know, you go and uh, you had um, uh, the Tubes, uh, She's a Beauty, you know, Bill and Bobby Kimball are on the background vocals in that. You can hear them clear as day. Um, uh, who else did he do at that point? There were so many records time guys were all sort of interchangeable um the chicago horns played on the bg's record the bg's sang on the chicago records they were like you know you go across the hall and knock on the door and go hey you want to come over and sing on our stuff that's why i was saying we should have had ozzy sing, sing a christmas tune that would yeah. that would have been yeah. Yeah. Keith, can you yeah. sing Keith. something for that us man yeah. can you Keith, sing uh, something for us anything Anything? Oh, just something small? <laughs> oh, jeez. Everybody in the chat's nah. asking. I didn't ask Keith to perform nah. tonight. Usually I let that, guess. I no, it's totally fine. Talking, but... I thought you were talking to me, Chris. I'll, I'll, what do you want to hear, bud? Yeah, go ahead, Sam. <laughs> uh, let me hear <laughs> some Steely Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, Keith, uh, listen. Uh, Keith, you... um. Not only, I mean, your arrangements are brilliant. You're you're a good, uh, a great songwriter too. I told you I'm a big fan of Back to You and all your Christmas arrangements. And then you have Bill Champlin who writes songs. Jeff Coffey, great singer, writes songs. Anything uh, we can look forward to of some, an album? Like, uh, has it been discussed with like the players with like, whether it be Tris or John Paris as the drummer, uh, but the three of you guys, uh, recording an album, Bill Champlin, Jeff Coffey, and Keith Hallen, because man, the, the, I mean, the vocals between those two guys and your guitar work, I mean, that, that would be fantastic. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it, it's already being discussed. I mean, for sure. I mean, right now we're just trying to get some gigs booked and, and, uh, kind of get, get this thing kind of moving along. Um, but yeah, recording is definitely a real, uh, real possibility, um, and it could be any number of combinations of people too. Because you know we've talked about it could could be the players with um, with J JP and 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 Bill, 
or it could mm -hmm. be Tris and Jeff and I. Uh, we even talked about maybe doing a trio, uh, like a power trio thing. Like, um, I don't know if you know, remember when, um, uh, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, John Mayer did the John Mayer trio. And it was uh, oh, yeah. him, Steve Jordan, and Pino Palladino, and they did like a live album. Um, He's done more than a really trio. Cool. <laughs> What's that? John Mayer's done more than a trio. Oh, oh yeah, but he did. He did <laughs> do a trio record. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's, <laughs> being, <laughs> he's being yeah. dirty. <laughs> but, uh, so you know, there's talk about that too. And I, I, I thought it was kind of ironic when I thought about it. If you take the first letter, <laughs> if you take the first letter of uh, Jeff and my and Triss's last names, you get C H I, Chai. Wow. Oh, oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> getting close to the copyright on that one. Yeah. Well, yeah. you could just call it Chicano. Call it Chicano. I'm telling you, and then you're nah, safe. <laughs> nobody, you nobody has that name. Nobody has that as a band name. So you could be C H I Cano Chicano. Now I listen. Well, call it and, chic. And, and call it chic because I want well, Champlin at the end of that. <laughs> you add you add Champlin to it, you get chic, and, and and but I think there's already a band name that. But um, ah, that's right. <laughs> I, I've always thought Chicano is a very funny name. Um, <laughs> Because it it does denote not Chicago, Chicago. Right. <laughs> oh, no. So, oh no! Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. But uh, uh, anyway, I like it. Well, Keith, yeah, Keith, man. You have, uh, listen, I I am so glad that I got you on the show. Uh, we had you on with Jeff, and I said uh, there were so many questions that I had for you. That, you know, we were just going over the show and I said, I got to have this guy back on. And I'm glad yeah. I did because you've been you've been so open and honest about everything. And I appreciate that. You know, I know some of the questions may have been a little uncomfortable, but you're just like open and honest about Why are you it. looking and at me, Rob? I, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I appreciate that. Buddy. I mean, is, uh, before we before we uh, go, because I don't want to keep Keith on too long. Is anybody else uh, down here in the crew here have any questions for Keith? I know I've been, you know, taking over the show here, but uh, yeah, I got a question well, for him. Uh, yeah. Is Rob dying? How does he get such big gets on his show? Is this like a Make a Wish <laughs> yeah. situation going on? <laughs> yeah. I mean, who the? F I mean, R Jesus! I didn't even think Rob even. Uh, yeah. We <laughs> no idea. Yeah, I don't know. You're not <laughs> wasting your time with this guy. No, yeah, no I'm good. Thank you for being that. here. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Hey, no worries, guys. Uh, you know, I hope I was able to answer your questions and not not get legend. myself into too much trouble. <laughs> no, I, I, I knew you're a legend. I get in trouble, but you're very honest and open, and I appreciate that. And you weren't disrespectful yeah. to anybody, too. So you don't have to worry about that. I mean, it's, you're you're very as honest as you could be, and uh, without being disrespectful to anybody. Um, the players have a website where they can keep track of uh, shows going on. What is that? That's it's theplayershow dot com. You know what? You know better than I do. I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and and, the and, there, and there's a there's a Facebook page too for the yeah. players, um, so go like that. I'm yes. pretty positive we're doing a gig in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, in uh, God, I, the date escapes me. February 10th, maybe 9th or 10th of February. Um, that's a real nice theater there in uh, St. Petersburg, and we're gonna try and put some stuff around it. Um, nice. you know, Jeff's down here in Orlando and I'm, I'm in Tampa. Um, Tris is actually over in Fort Lauderdale. So a lot of nice. us are in Florida and, um, nice. and then of course, Bill and, and, uh, John are in LA, but Hey man, Southwest, you know, <laughs> yeah. Keith, I want to get an that. autographed guitar it's... from you, man. I'll purchase it. I want to, I want to get a guitar from you to put on my wall. Will you sell Chris Abel's a, uh, autographed guitar? Yeah, uh, Keith, he re I'll really buy one. This guy's got money. I, he's got more money than me. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'll buy it. I'm I'm serious. I want to put that in my collection, man. Yeah. Well, bring it bring it on out. I'm 
I'm happy to sign yeah. it. I'll sign it. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, it's it's the players, the players show dot com, uh, t h e the players show dot com, and uh, all the gigs will be posted. Keith Howland, uh, legend. I mean, really. My my yeah. time frame was seeing Chicago. You were the guitarist for Chicago. Um, you know, you you came on right after Dwayne Bailey. I'd never seen any of those live shows, but uh, I mean, it was always just the highlight uh, of my childhood, uh, teenage years, to go see Chicago with uh, with you guys, you and Bill and and Jason um, and Tris. So thank you for coming on this program and uh, talking about your career and everything with us. And I hope to see you soon. I'm going to keep still pushing and, and bugging Jeff and giving him email addresses to get you guys in Atlantic city because, uh, I'm, uh, I'm dying. That would be great. Stuff. Yeah. But, uh, uh thank awesome. you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would love it. So, and I'm sure everybody else uh, would want to see these gigs around. So, uh, keep your eyes peeled. The player show.com. Uh, Keith Allen. Thank you very much. Yeah. Brother. Thank you guys. Thanks, All right. It's been a blast. Yes, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Keith Allen. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Keith. Yes. Oh, wow. I, you know, I like that guy. I, I was really nervous about asking some of these questions, but he was very open and honest about it. And I, I Dude, really he, was am, he, he was amazing the first time that you had him on the show. Uh, yeah. But that, yeah, Zen's right, man. You must have a Make-A-Wish going. <laughs> but I mean, a lot of these guys in Chicago, after they leave, they, they, they clam up about stuff and you know, he wasn't being disrespectful to the band, but he was honest no. about everything. And I appreciate that. And, and I'm sure might Chicago I say, people. might I say for the, for the record, Bobby, great job on your fucking maiden voyage with yes. the Saul show oh. tonight. I appreciate you saying you did that. A great job, man. You, you you hung you fucking had some great questions. You did some great yeah, you effects. Threw some questions. I really you took know, over that interview, yeah. which I do during interviews. Well, but I appreciate when you it guys. It is the Rob Soul show, after all. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Uh, you, you, you got to pick your battles. You know, we don't want to break yeah. the guy's balls too hard because he's yeah. a, he's a nice guy and he's a, and he's a musician. He's not a comic. Yeah, you know. But even before uh, Keith came yeah. on, BF and was hanging. Man, you, I, I got to stop. Maybe I'm being too. BF is great, man. And I'm yeah, being in a good mood, but Thanks. I was watching Zen. I said, wow, I really appreciate Zen. He's not like coming in and busting balls. He's really letting this guy talk. And, and Zen, you, you are, you're, you're a fucking, you're a pro. Like not even it's like, you that, know, you know, you oh know my God, he, that shit, dude. Steely yeah. Dan. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. oh that was, yeah. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> was fucking about, like was he wasn't like, like, you know, he wasn't like, he wasn't bombarding the interview with one liners. He was, you know, no. he yeah. was very respectful. And I, yeah, and I, I couldn't that. think of anything really. Yeah. I was just kind of stuck. <laughs> Since professional, unlike me, I was just like, fuck this. I was like, how'd you break your fucking arm? Yeah. So, Sing, man. Yeah, no, that was a good question, I'm, too. I was planning yeah, on breaking my neck next great. week, so Bobby can take over my spot. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, uh, I always get nervous when there's a lot of people on and there's a guest, but everybody was, you guys were all pros tonight. And, uh, yeah, was, except uh, for Chris with those dumb questions. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was like, what is your chair say? What is your chair say? Chicano or Chicago? <laughs> that was so, good. I yeah, thought I said I Chicago. I saw that too. Hey. <laughs> I just had to be clear. I don't know. Say, Keith, what's said, what's your opinion on, Keith, what's your opinion on black people? Go. Yeah. <laughs> Slavery. Does Chicago yeah. play for Negro? <laughs> Slavery. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank oh, you for shit. tuning in to the Soul Show. Go to Le uh, patreon.com slash Levyland for bonus Levyland shows and Soul Dio's shows. right. Next week, Stevie Wonder. All right, there you go. Yeah, uh, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't. He doesn't see what's coming. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very nice. much. That and was good. We'll Rob. see. That was a good one. We'll see. Oh uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see you on Patreon and back here next week. Oh look, Bobby Fran there. He said, "Bobby <laughs> Fran, welcome to the yeah. show." And uh, Bobby, you got to get me a. Bobby's oh, there he is. Too. He just called. Yeah. <laughs> we got to. Um, I got to. I got to get Bobby moderating on the uh, on the Patreon because. Uh, yeah. Do stuff there but we'll we'll see you guys all next week and before next week right on uh patreon Great. good night everybody god bless keith hallen the players peace <laughs>